Guys, you can put anything in your car, can't you? You can put any oil. These numbers don't mean anything, any brand. Just whack it in your Prado, and she'll be right, mate. Hey, stay tuned, because that's not quite how it is, and I'll show you how and why. Well, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Mike, and this is Prado 150 out of here. I own a Prado, it's a 2015 model, October build, Prado 150 turbo a diesel. Absolutely love it. I've had it for a number of years now, can't fault it, just to finish a big trip, and uh, absolutely loving, loving the Prado. So guys, uh, got a family of five. I've got myself, Shelley is my wife, and three children so got Joshua Lachlan and Chloe the two boys now they've got their four drive rigs and they're slowly doing a few things to it so we've had some absolutely fantastic times going camping and hitting the tracks for driving I cover uh, quite a number of uh, areas so we go camping we uh, try and do some pretty good uh, hairy tracks and I also um, try and give you some information that I've found out about the Prado I am not a, I'm not a qualified mechanic, but um, I would like to say I know my limits and I'll try and do a lot of stuff myself on my Prado, particularly when it comes to maintenance. Let's get into it, eh? Dan's Automotive, we've got Dan here again now. Now, if you've got a mechanic, you've got to look after him, eh? If you want to sweet talk him, look after him. Bring him a cup of coffee, yeah. or a tea in this case. A, a cup of tea. And yeah. if it's after five o'clock, bring him a beer. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've done that too before, haven't I? <laughs> many, many times, yeah. Yeah, so how was your tea, mate? Uh, pretty good, actually. And it was yeah. good timing, was it? it? It was great timing. You like your tea a bit later in the day, don't you? I do, I do. See, yeah. when you get to know your mechanic, you, you get to know a few of these things. You're you becoming pretty good. You've, you've brought me more cup of teas than what um, uh, my wife makes me at the moment. So. <laughs> That's a bit of a worry, isn't it? It, it, is, it is a bit of a worry, yeah. Now, Dan, just quickly, mate, you've got an addition to the family, mate. A new one, yeah, another one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's number two. Wow, yeah. how's that going? Uh, Keeping you up at night? Oh, not too bad. Yeah, no, yeah. No, not too bad. I, I, I'm not a good sleeper anyway. I'm always doing something, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't make much of a difference to me. <laughs> well, mate, um, while I've got you here, or while I'm, you know, bringing you a cup of tea, I thought I'd ask you about oils, mate. Oils yeah. just ain't oils, are they? No, and... Um, and we're talking about the Prado here, the Prado 150. We are, we are. So basically, yep. the way I've always looked at it is there's actually more opinions than there are oils. And I've, I've found well, that out. Yeah, there's more opinions than oils. So, um... We're talking about your 1KD. So basically, you you came to me and you said, oh, I bought this, I bought this oil. I don't know whether it's right or not. This is what the site recommends. Um, and also so we'll say what we bought. So yeah. I, I got the pen right. Five five forty. Yeah. Yeah. Five W forty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although that rec that's what's recommended by the manufacturer, and that's what Penrite have decided meets the necessary requirements. Um, I tend to ignore that <laughs> yeah, personally, yeah. unless the vehicle is under warranty and. You, you kind of have to do it because that's what's stipulated by the manufacturer under the terms of the, the, um, the you know, the life of the vehicle for, uh, under the warranty terms. Yeah. 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 Um, I, uh, I just tend to use a bit of um, common sense and a bit of education mixed in there. So yeah. You get you get to know your, your customers' vehicles and what they use them for. In your case, you're about to get a caravan. 
so you're going to be towing. Yeah. You do. Yep. You do a fair bit of, of off-roading. I do. I like to say I do. <laughs> so yours isn't the run-of-the-mill Prado that drops the kids off to school and then and goes to church on a Sunday. No. Right. No. It gets used. It gets worn. Mate, I reckon it's just done about three or four thousand k's in yeah. the last uh, week or two. <laughs> yeah. So in in saying that, uh, you want to step into a thicker viscosity. Okay. So a ten weight forty, or in some cases a fifteen weight forty. It also depends on the climate. Queensland is fairly warm. If you were living in Victoria, you spend a bit of time, you know, in the high country. Mm, mm. I would say to run on the thinner side. Yeah. But um, yeah, here it's pretty. It's pretty warm. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I recommend it to you to run with a, a ten weight forty um, that has the necessary specs to satisfy the manufactured recommend, uh, recommended oils. Okay. So there is one I mentioned to you, but there's there's a few out there on the market. So just do your homework really when it comes to oils and have a look um, at the actual specifications um, of the genuine oil that would be put in there and try and match that to something that you can buy off the shelf. Um, yeah, by all means you can go and buy oil from the, from the dealership. Um, but uh, you, in most cases there's, there's better out there and, and more cost effective you know, variants. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so what I was just saying to you as well is a, a rule of thumb that I've come to, and this is, again, this is, this is my opinion in my workshop. This is not what I say is gospel. This is what I mate, is what I, I like and to. I accept your opinion. That's why I'm here because yeah. you've been that's what I say. You've proven there's yourself, some, mate. Of how many years have you yeah. kind of there's there's more there's here. more opinions than yours. So. <laughs> I've just realised that. Yeah. So basically, if you have um, with a one kd from from new from factory, yes, you'd want to run your five weight thirty in there. Um, up until they were five years old, they come out of warranty, and then usually they get taken elsewhere and whatever all goes in it. But yeah, yeah. My, my rule of thumb is. Early 1KDs, so 1KDs in your your High Ace, your Prado, your Hiluxes from 05 to let's say 2011, 2012, I will run a 15 weight 40 oil in there. Yeah. Now, all those vehicles at current time are going to have high kilometres on them. Let, let's face it, most of them are going to have over 200,000. Yeah. You're yeah. going to want to run your 15 weight 40 oil in there. It, a is a heavy duty oil, B, high viscosity, it's going to keep the oil pressure up there and see it's going to protect and lubricate better than a thinner oil. Simple as that. Um, 2012 onwards, so your later 1KDs, I will run a 10 weight 40. Um, and there is a specific one that I like, I like using, but I've just found that um, the basically the engines that run the latest series of injectors, um, they're a little bit more refined. Um, and uh, especially in your Prado as well, they are, they are tuned slightly different. Um, so I just prefer to run uh, a 10 weight 40 in those. I just feel that it's a better oil for those particular engines, that particular series of engines, um, and they just seem to run nice and smooth. Yeah. yeah. If, if you do have, um, if you do have really high kilometres on your uh, later model Prado Hilux, um, what, you know, 1KD, uh, yeah, r run a 15 40 in it, um, but. Uh, Generally speaking, that's what I've got to swap back on. 15.40 for the earlier ones, 10 weight 40 for the later model ones. Um, five weight doesn't come in, into the picture anymore. Um, it's just simply, it's too thin. It's too thin. It just doesn't doesn't have the protective um, qualities there. So some some of the, when you said there's plenty of opinions, one of the opinions that I came across is that the five is good for the starting up cold it start. Is. It is, that's right. Yep. The, the thinner the oil, um, you know, like it's, well, it's not necessarily, not necessarily thinner, it's the properties of the oils. A lot of five weight oils have, um, uh, like your Magnatec and that, the molecules are designed to actually cling to all your moving parts. Um, so on startup, it, it tends to want to prime a bit quicker. Um, but that, in the whole scheme of things, that's not a it, great benefit? It, in Queensland, it's not really necessary. And I will say as well, some of it does come down to your oil filter. Like if you run a Ryko filter with an anti-drain back valve, that can help because you're also, then you're not having to actually uh, fill that oil filter on startup and, and, and prime the oil, you know, the oil system um, or prime up the pump basically. So yeah, run a decent oil filter on it as well. Mm. Like, I do, I do recommend Ryko. They, mm. that they are good. But um, yeah, thinner oils will help a little bit with that um, in, in colder temperatures. But like I say, in Queensland, I mean, yeah, it gets a bit, bit cool here in the winter, but. 
yeah. So one more not, question. Not, not vital, no. For people like me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say I'm a, a maybe a, I know a little bit, I, you know, I can yeah. do an oil change and, and a few things on the car, but mm. so what, um, what do those numbers mean? So, you know, you're talking about 10, 40, 15, 40. What do those two numbers mean? Well, basically it's your, your viscosity and the weight. So um, it'll be to do with uh, how thick it is and, the, and, and how easily it flows, basically. Right, um, but this, uh, that these days is kind of not the real vital thing to actually look for. It's your additives within that oil. So you'll have things like um, GF5, GF6, um, there's, the, the, there's a whole heap of, of different codes and numbers and things like C1, C2, C3, C4. Uh, that's important, that's really important because that's basically the additives that are in that oil that have been specified by the manufacturer to be a requirement for your engine. Mm, um, mm. Don't just pick any, oh, 1540, that'll do. Actually check the specifications and what's in there. And, and what's actually in the oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's really, really important on modern diesel engines like your older stuff you literally could just pick an oil off the shelf and go yep yeah that'll do it's 1540 that's that's what i mean but modern stuff be be specific okay. check what okay. was actually in your um oil that was used in the engines at, at the dealership you know from the manufacturer and match that with your aftermarket oil yeah your off-the-shelf yeah. stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. I, yeah, you, you don't think there's, there's that much, you know, and especially yeah. when you think you're doing the right thing. Like I walked into Autobahn mm. and uh, I typed in my rego. It came up with my vehicle. Yeah, it will. First time yeah. I've done that and it, and it said 5W40. Yeah. So I went in there and I got my seven litres of 5W40 and then since then I've like had a bit of a moment, you know, like, oh, I don't know about this. And um, when I've been using, well, I've been using the 1040 mostly. Yeah. And so um, on your advice, mate, I'm going to take it back because I haven't opened it mm. and go and get the, uh, the better. The, 10, the 1040. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. part of doing your oil change, what every five, is long jeopardy. So you want to put the right oil in there to yeah. make it worthwhile changing yeah, the oil. Right. Every, and, you know? like, uh, it, it all depends on, if, if you're doing it yourself or, it, or, or not, if you're actually taking it to uh, a workshop to get it done, uh, again, this is kind of your opinion and, and your thoughts and, uh, and your maintenance process for your vehicle. Are you doing it every 5,000? Are you doing it every 10? Are you doing it to manufacturer's recommendations? Um, if you're doing it every five, um, which I kind of tend to push people towards that on a lot mm. of their mm. turbo diesels, uh, every 5,000, especially if you're using it, like I say, you're towing or, or, or off-road. Um, yeah, like, you know, mm. run run a good oil in it because the engine's working hard. You mm. want to protect it as much as you can. Um, if you if you're going to stretch it out a bit, just kind of be vigilant. Don't don't buy a, a cheap oil. Mm. Get something mm. that's actually mm. decent quality that will that will go. I, again, I, I no matter what diesel engine, I probably wouldn't uh, stretch it out past. 10,000, no, if you yeah. can help it. I yeah, know a yeah. lot of them now are 20,000 between service schedules. That's a, that's a long time to have oil in there. Mm. Yeah, so. Well, mate, I think I've taken up enough of your time. This has been a, what do they call it, ad hoc? Yeah. I've just said, mate, can we, um, can you give a bit, a bit of advice to the, to the viewers there? on oils because i don't know about you guys but it does get a bit uh confusing it's, it's it's even confusing for me because you get uh you get a new vehicle a new engine come out and um one week you'll look on there and say use this and then a few months down the track they would have changed that and gone actually mm. use this because mm. man manufacturers have, have changed as in like yeah you know castor oil for example mm. that they, mm. they've changed their oil type and they they make an oil that suits more you know, a multitude of vehicles so then you're actually searching for a different oil. Luckily enough here I stock the same oils and I get them over and over and over and they just send me basically yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what I've got on the order. Yeah, yeah. Or if they don't have that, they send me the equivalent to it. But um, yeah, and oh, another good piece of advice, don't change brands of oil a lot. Yeah, look, I'm guilty of that. 
stick yeah, it, yeah. Once, once you've found one that, that you like yeah, stick okay. with it and use that same oil in it continuously yeah, and I, yeah. they actually have some on the other day that said the complete opposite they said they change brands continuously throughout the life of the vehicle and they feel that that helped whether it did or didn't, mm. I don't know. But personally, myself, I like to run the same oil, the same brand, the same viscosity from my first service and, and follow that through. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot about just oil, isn't there? Yeah. You know, yeah, um, mm. yeah well, that's been great. So I definitely will go down and, and change it and mm. uh, get the, get the 10, 1040. 1040, yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, that's been awesome. Thanks, Dan, for that. That's all right. And um, I'm sure you got. A bit more work to do, haven't you? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, one more. Yeah. I don't know if this will go out before the uh, show, but you're going to be down at the 4x4 show at Brisbane, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be there with my latest build. Yeah, um, okay. The, yeah, the, uh, the Gladiator that I've been building. Um, we'll do a bit of a... So, bit of a show on that when you yeah at, at the moment when you're ready I, at the moment i will say there's a few things that are a little bit secret squirrel on it but um yeah yeah nice. you all will all be revealed in two weeks because i can't uh, tell people not to look at it yeah, when it's on display yeah, that's right you can't no that's <laughs> so, right yeah. it's there for everyone to see yeah so guys if um you've probably watched uh, a few of the other videos but dan's a good a good man he's a good mechanic trustworthy and uh he's certainly provided some good advice just just on oils. I mean, that's yeah. that's great. Hopefully, um, if you guys have the same, you know, bit of confusion there on what to use, um, hopefully we've kind of ironed that out a bit. And uh, give it, us is, some good it, advice. it is a bit daunting when you walk into a, an automotive store and, you and go, there are shelves. Yeah, and, and even go, some of those guys don't know what they're talking about either. And yeah, that's half the problem. Uh, unless, unless you are a, a lubrication technician, mm. it would be really hard to be on top of every single aspect of oils yeah. and coolants and, yeah. and all fluids and additives used in a, in a, in a motor vehicle mm. like it, mm. it's constantly changing mm. there's, there's so much out there um, that's why I say it's easier to kind of find one stick to it and yeah then you're, and then buy the same one all the time. you're set then yeah all right mate well um, if you need if you need any help from Dan um, you got to book in early don't you you? he's, early, he's yeah. pretty busy yeah, I, like, but he's worth yeah. it. You're worth it, mate. So um, I'll leave his details uh, in the description there, phone number and website and, and all that kind of stuff. And if you need Dan, give him a call. Um, you just got to book him in, <laughs> like I'm trying to do at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Ready for this yeah. caravan. So uh, all right, mate. Thanks yeah, again. No worries. And I'm, I'll let you get back to whatever it was you do before I came and interrupted you yeah, with that cup of tea. <laughs> so guys, that brings us to an end. I hope that I have given you some very good information, helped you out, and dispelled any confusion uh, in relation to what oil to put in your Prado, or for any four-wheel drive for that matter. Um, so I'm now gonna be buying the 10W40 from Newlands uh, from Autobahn in Toowoomba, and that's gonna be my go-to oil from now on. Uh, I'm gonna have to buy the 10 litre, because these use the seven litre, and. Uh, they don't come in a seven litre at the moment. So there you go. Uh, I've just completed an oil change. I do mine every 5,000 Ks. And I've been now doing my oil filter every 10,000 Ks.